As hospitals across the nation fight this pandemic, most visitors have been barred. Family members have to say goodbye to loved ones through the phone. And in some cases, they don't get a chance to say goodbye at all. But there is a remarkable group of people who, during this crisis, have run toward death and this deadly virus in order to be there for those who are suffering. Hospital chaplains, men and women from various religious backgrounds who are there in patients' final moments to pray, to guide, to connect. And now their jobs have become that much more important as hospitals are transforming into war zones and doctors need prayers just as much as their patients do. Joining us now, someone who has run towards death in recent weeks, Rocky Walker. He is the chaplain of the cardiovascular ward at Mount Sinai Hospital in Manhattan. He's also a retired Army major. Chaplain, thank you for joining me. Thank you for all the work that you're doing. You say today that you are closer to death now than you were serving in the Persian Gulf War. Take us inside the hospital. What have the last few weeks been like for you? Thank you, Stephanie. Uh, it's, it's unlike anything I've ever seen before, uh, including my time as a chaplain and my time in, in war. We see death a lot around here, but it's, it's not nearly this much. And it's usually a lot of different things that are causing people to die. I like to say that I'm in the business of consequences. Usually choices that people have made um, have brought them to the hospital. I am no longer in the business. None of us are any longer in the business of consequences. This thing is indiscriminate. Um, it is to see this many people, this sick, this many people dying uh, at this rate, uh, and everyone is sick from the same thing. It's unlike anything I've ever seen before. That is the, the negative side of it, and it's, it is very hard to deal with. It's very hard to deal with. There's a very positive side of this as well. In the middle of all this calamity, in the middle of all this sadness, there is there's so much goodness that people are people are displaying. Not just other coworkers, which they amaze me, but the patients themselves, the ones that are not um, intubated, that can talk. They're they're nothing but kind and grateful. And family members, Stephanie, you have no idea how many times in a day. A grieving family member will stop crying for their family member who we've just told them has died, and they stop to thank us. It's interesting. It's like while we all have had to put this mask on our face to protect ourselves from this virus, the mask seems to be coming off of our character. And you're seeing some of the most wonderful things happen in, in, in one of the most darkest times. Do you find yourself having to be with these patients, comforting them at a time when their families, their closest loved ones can't be in the hospital with them? Absolutely. Uh, to a certain degree, um, most of, so I work in the ICUs and I have some of the, I have the very first unit that was a COVID unit. All my, all my units are now COVID units. It's no longer cardiovascular. Most of my patients are so sick that you can't talk to them. They're intubated. Uh, so it becomes a family ministry. I'm meeting people and, and we're spending an awful lot of time with families. A normal day will spend from anywhere from six to noon or one or two o'clock, just catching up on where a patient is medically because this thing is so fluid. And then we'll spend the rest of the day uh, reaching out to family members because they can't be here. So there's a lot of Zoom conferences. I, you know, I mean, we are Zoom experts now, uh, but that's that's a typical day is, uh, you know, catching up medically what's going on in the morning, and then reaching out to family members in the uh, in the uh, in the afternoon. This time it is different. You're not just praying for these patients and their families. You're praying for the health of the doctors and the nurses and for your own health right now. You're at risk. That's absolutely correct. As a matter of fact, uh, we're spending more time with the staff than we are with families. Um, the staff, you have to understand when 
Family members are present. We sort of work together as a team, the staff and the family members, to help the patient get better. Well, the, t the family members are, are gone now, so now the staff is having to do the work that a loving wife or a loving husband or a mother or father or sister would do. So we're having to do all that. They're exhausted, and this is very hard. And, and unfortunately, in this hospital, we've seen some of our colleagues come in here. And that is and that is doubly difficult. So there's a much more time being spent with staff than normal and even more time being spent with staff than probably being spent with patients and family members at this point. I've had to well, we we came up with what we call a hero room. So each of my heart units has a very small room, un, not un, not too much unlike the room I'm in now that each unit has sacrificed, if you will. And we put a comfortable chair in there and a soft light. And if you just need to come in and cry, if you need to come in and pray, if you need to come in and scream, you know, uh, we we want to make that available. We want to make sure the staff knows that it's okay to do that. And that's one of the things that we've done here um, and is an attempt to take care of the staff. Hey there, I'm Chris Hayes from MSNBC. Thanks for watching MSNBC on YouTube. If you want to keep up to date with the videos we're putting out, you can click subscribe just below me or click over on this list to see lots of other great videos.